Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this session is actually a continuation of the spinal cord, uh, the internal features of spinal cord. So those who haven't seen the previous sessions on spinal cord, uh, please watch all those sessions, the external features, the internal features, the gray matter and uh, how the white matter is classified around the gray matter. All these things, uh, please have a quick look before you view the session. So this session, uh, what I'm trying to uh, convey the messages uh, about the descending tracts. Descending tracts means motor tracts because they are actually arising from the higher centers of the brain and they will be terminating in the spinal cord. So it can arise from different parts of the higher centers like it can arise from the cerebral cortex, it can arise from different parts of the brain stem but the point of termination will be the anterior horn cells or sometimes the lateral horn cells of the spinal cord, the gray matter of the spinal cord. So that is the course uh, and termination of the descending tracts. Now when we talk about the descending tracts or motor tracts of the spinal cord, there are actually empty number of nerve fibers. But for, for you to understand, I am actually uh, discussing some of the very important fibers you have to know. So when we talk about the motor tract fibers, there are mainly crossed fibers as well as uncrossed fibers. What do you mean by crossed fibers and uncrossed fibers? Crossed fibers means they will be starting from one side of the higher center but terminating on the opposite side of the spinal cord. That is, it if, suppose if it arises from the right cerebral cortex, the fibers will be ending in the left side of the spinal cord, the anterior horn cells. Okay, the anterior horn cells of the left side of the spinal cord. So, such fibers which are actually crossing from one side to the other side during its course, this is, they are known as crossed fibers. But sometimes there are fibers which are not crossing to the opposite side. That means they start from one side of the higher center, they will continue on that side till it terminates in the anterior horn cell of the spinal cord. They are actually known as uncrossed fibers. So the reason why we are stressing on this point is you need to know which are the fibers crossing and which are the fibers which are not crossing because if you get a lesion on one side of the cerebral cortex suppose for example the findings will be elicited on the opposite side so that is for the crossed fibers if you are uh, thinking if you are dealing with an uncrossed set of fibers what happens is if you get a lesion on one side the findings you will be eliciting on the same side so that is the main difference between crossed fibers and uncrossed fibers. Now let's see one, uh, one by one the important descending fibers or motor tracts which are seen in the spinal cord. The first one and the most important thing is the corticospinal tract. From the word itself we can uh, assess the fibers origin, how, where they originate and where they will be terminating. Cortico means it is arising from the cerebral cortex. So they are chiefly arising from areas 4 and 6 and sometimes from uh, other regions like area 3, 1, 2 and other parts of the cerebral cortex. And what happens? They will be actually descending through the same side and it will be entering through the posterior one of the internal capsule then it will be entering to, uh, through the cerebral peduncle then through the pons and it will reach the medulla. Once it reaches or enters into the pyramid of medulla it will decussate to the opposite side that is known as pyramidal decussation. So they are also known as pyramidal tract fibers why because uh, the pyramid contains mainly the corticospinal fibers. So the corticospinal fibers are actually contained in the pyramid of medulla. Hence they are known as pyramidal tract fibers. So all the rest of the motor fibers which are not passing through the pyramid of medulla you call it as extra pyramidal fibers. That is extra pyramidal system and pyramidal system. So pyramidal fibers means the fibers which are running through the pyramidal tract of medulla. So at the pyramid they will actually cross to the opposite side and they will be actually terminating in the anterior horn, the ventral horn the, or the anterior horn of the spinal cord at different levels starting from cervical, thoracic, lumbar and sacral region. Throughout the spinal cord it will be entering, uh, ending in the 
anterior horn cell of the spinal cord depending upon the region because and it is said that 50 percentage of it will be ending in the cervical region and uh, the rest of it will be ending in the thoracic and lumbosacral regions so the fibers which cross to the opposite so the corticospinal fibers when we mention it, it has got some peculiarities that means 90 percentage of the fibers will be crossing to the opposite side through the pyramidal decussation and you call it as lateral corticospinal tract so when you see a section of the spinal cord the fibers which are named as lateral, lateral corticospinal tract they are actually the crossed fibers which are decussating at the pyramid of medulla sometimes 8 percentage of the fibers will be actually coming down without decussating at the pyramidal decussation they won't be actually crossing to the opposite side but they will be running through the same side and when they reach this point they will actually cross through the anterior commissure and will end in the ventral horn of the opposite side so the thing is they are crossing to the opposite side but not at the level of pyramidal decussation so such fibers so they still they are crossing and they are accounts to about 8 percentage of fibers and they are named as anterior corticospinal tract and it is said that roughly 2 percentage of the fibers run uh, and ends in the same side of the anterior horn without crossing to the opposite side so when, when we talk about the corticospinal fibers 90 percentage of it will be decussating at the pyramidal level and will be moving to the opposite side and they will be finally relaying in the anterior or ventral horn of the spinal cord of the opposite side so we have seen the corticospinal fibers now uh, let's see the next set of fibers that is the tectospinal fibers tectospinal fibers let's see the origin it is from the tectum of midbrain that is the superior colliculus now what happens to the fibers they will descend on the same side but at the at the point where it decussates that is at the tegmentum it decussates to the opposite side and it will reach the anterior horn so this decussation is known as dorsal tegmental decussation of maynard when you uh, when we studied when we discussed about the different sections of brain stem you might have heard this term dorsal tegmental decussation so dorsal tegmental decussation is nothing but the nerve fibers the tectospinal nerve fibers which are crossing to the opposite side so tectospinal starts from the superior colliculus and at the tegmentum of midbrain they will cross to the opposite side on the dorsal aspect hence this crossing set of fibers is known as dorsal tegmental decussation and then it will lie on the opposite side and what happens is in the cervical region it usually ends in the anterior horn cells of the cervical region they are not actually going uh, beyond the cervical segments they will be ending at the cervical segments anterior horn cells uh, the reason is they are actually concerned with the movement of head, neck and arm in response to visual stimuli. That is a important function of tectospinal tract. When we talk about the corticospinal tract, they are actually meant for the skilled movements of the body, the different parts of the body. Whereas tectospinal, they are, end, they are not ending throughout the uh, brain, uh, spinal cord. They are ending at the cervical segments, the anterior horn cells. The reason is they are actually concerned with the movements of head, neck and arm in response to the visual stimuli. Now coming to the next set of fibers. They are known as rubrospinal. Rubro means red, isn't it? So it arises from the red nucleus of midbrain. What happens then? They are actually descending on the same side but again same as that of the tectospinal. They will be crossing to the opposite side through the tegmental region and this decussation you call it as ventral tegmental decussation because it is more or less lying on the ventral aspect of the midbrain so that is known as ventral tegmental decussation of foral so these two things now it will be easy for you to understand these two decussations uh, when you study the sections of the brain stem okay so that is rubrospinal so they again descend on one side 
cross to the opposite side in the midbrain the tegmental region through the ventral tegmental decussation of foral and now they will descend through the opposite side and where will they finally terminate they again end in the anterior horn cells especially in the cervical thoracic region and in the lumbosacral region and what is the main purpose of the rubrospinal tract they are actually concerned with the unconscious coordination of movements that is when you walk when you run uh, you are not uh, aware of how you coordinate the movements right so this type of coordination is mainly done by the rubrospinal tract so that so that is about tectospinal and rubrospinal so up to these points we have seen that the fibers are actually originating on one side and crossing to the opposite side now uh, let's see another set of fibers they are known as vestibulospinal tract vestibulo means they are arising from the vestibular nucleus seen in the upper part of medulla so vestibular nucleus actually is a nuclear complex which are made up of uh, the lateral the medial superior and inferior so it is made up of four types of nuclei lateral medial superior and inferior vestibular nuclei so when we talk about lateral vestibulospinal tract they arise from the lateral vestibular nucleus so lateral vestibulospinal tract if we say uh, then obviously there will be uh, a vestibulospinal tract known as medial vestibulospinal tract i haven't mentioned that here because now we are going to talk about the uncrossed fibers okay till now we mentioned about the important crossed fibers now we are uh, going to mention about two uncrossed set of fibers so among the lateral and medial vestibulospinal tract lateral is exclusively uncrossed set of fibers whereas when we discuss about medial vestibulospinal tract they include crossed as well as uncrossed fibers so i am not here to confuse you so we will just mention about the uncrossed fibers under the name lateral vestibulospinal tract so where are they coming from so the nerve fibers are actually coming to this nucleus from the vestibular nerve as well as from the cerebellum and they will after uh, emerging from the vestibular nucleus travel on the same side until it reaches the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord okay so they maintain uh, the side that is they originate on one side and they terminate on the same side they are not crossing to the opposite side so they are lateral vestibulospinal tract at this point you have to remember one thing that is you have another set known as medial vestibulospinal they might contain crossed fibers as well and what is the function of this vestibulospinal vestibulospinal is actually concerned with arch cerebellum that is the maintenance of uh, balance posture and balance so they again are actually uh, playing a very important role in the unconscious maintenance of posture and balance if you are standing straight you are not aware of the fact that you need to stand like this to maintain the posture you are not aware it is actually there in the unconscious mind and these fibers are actually doing that role or playing that role so that is the lateral vestibulospinal tract now uh, another important tract uh, which i would like to mention here is reticulospinal tract so reticulospinal means they arise from the reticular formation reticular formation is there uh, throughout the brain stem and in the upper part of the spinal cord so uh, the when we mention uh, the reticulospinal tract here i have written it as medial reticulospinal tract so when we, when we mention about medial obviously there will be one lateral right so why i have written medial here is they are the set of fibers which are not crossing okay because we are uh, mentioning about uncrossed fibers the lateral and lateral vestibulospinal and medial reticulospinal that means its counterpart will be crossing okay so medial reticulospinal tract arises from the reticular formation which is there in the pons you have the reticular formation throughout the brain stem and in the upper part of spinal cord but medial reticulospinal tract arises from the reticular formation in the pons and uh, how about the fibers they travel on the same side as the uh, as the point of origin they travel on the same side and they end in the ventral horn of the spinal cord the throughout the spinal cord in the ventral horn it will end and what are they uh, what is the main function of the medial reticulospinal tract they are actually inhibitory 
uh, they are actually having an inhibitory effect on the motor neurons. So if this is inhibitory, the lateral reticulospinal will be excitatory. So that is actually a uh, function of the medial as well as lateral reticulospinal tract. So uh, what I uh, wish to convey is when we talk about the descending motor tracts, there are many number of descending motor tracts uh, which you will be coming across when you take a section. But these are the very important tracts which will help you to assess some of the clinical conditions. So we have seen the major set of crossed fibers and the major important uh, uncrossed fibers as well. So the crossed fibers are corticospinal, tectospinal, rubrospinal and corticospinal you have to remember the point that 90% crosses at the pyramidal decussation, 8% will run uncrossed but still at the point of uh, exit they will cross to the opposite side through the anterior commissure and only 2% will be made up of, will be continuing down as uncrossed. Then the tectospinal it starts from the superior colliculus it decussates at the level of dorsal tegmental decussation then it ends at the cervical anterior horn cells whereas all the rest of the fibers will be ending throughout the um, uh, in the anterior horn cells throughout the spinal cord whereas uh, the tectospinal will be ending in the anterior horn cells in, uh, confined to the cervical region. Then rubrospinal starting from the red nucleus they decussate at the level of ventral tegmental decussation and uh, they will be ending in the anterior horn cells. Then lateral vestibulospinal they are uncrossed and medial reticulospinal they are again uncrossed. Talking about the functions in a nutshell, corticospinal meant for skilled movements, tectospinal movement of the head, neck and arm in response to the visual stimuli. Then you have the rubrospinal where uh, it controls the unconscious uh, coordination of the movements. Then vestibulospinal again unconscious maintenance of uh, posture and balance and reticulospinal it is having an inhibitory effect on the motor neurons. And once again corticospinal fibers are known as pyramidal tract fibers because they pass through the pyramids of medulla and all the rest of the motor neurons are known as extra pyramidal fibers. So this is about uh, the descending tract or motor tract in a nutshell. So I will be de uh, dealing with the sensory tract in the next session. Thanks for watching.